What is the ERA test and should you do one? I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I'm a fertility doctor. And I talk about fertility and IVF and the endometrium every single day. Welcome to the YouTube channel and this channel exists so that you can learn more about your body and I can help support you with education throughout your journey to just know yourself better, be your healthiest, or get pregnant. If you're going through fertility treatment, you've done IVF, you may have heard of the ERA test and have a lot of questions about it. The ERA test stands for endometrial receptivity analysis. So the point of an ERA is to try to evaluate the endometrium and to see what will be best for a frozen embryo transfer. When you're doing a frozen embryo transfer, first of all, just understand that's very different than a fresh embryo transfer. And I have a whole video on the differences. But if we're going to summarize it really quickly, when you go through IVF, remember what you're doing is trying to get one month's group of eggs all to grow and develop. And then you're taking that month's group of eggs out of the body fertilizing them with sperm in the lab and growing embryos out. Those embryos can be either be transferred on day five, and that's considered a fresh transfer, or they can be frozen. And if they're frozen, they can sometimes be biopsy and sent off for genetics, or they can just be frozen and then transferred in a subsequent cycle. Frozen transfers have increased exponentially, especially as transfer technology or the freezing technology has gotten better and the transfer outcomes have gotten better and we see improved baby outcomes from a frozen transfer versus a fresh and a lot of different reasons why but probably due to the placenta growing into that high hormonal environment that we see in a fresh cycle is just so different than what is closer to nature and when it comes to estrogen levels and other hormones so by doing a frozen transfer and getting closer to physiologic levels we just see improved outcomes when it comes to the placenta. So just for reference, a frozen transfer, rates have increased from 40% to 75% in less than 10 years. So we just seen a huge increase in a lot of embryo transfers being frozen. Well, now when you're doing a frozen transfer and you're trying to select the best embryo, we're also seeing an increase in genetic testing. And I love genetic testing for a lot of reasons because I'm always trying to get as much data as possible. I'm so nerdy about it. The more data I can get about that embryo and if I know which embryos have the highest chance of success and the lowest chance of miscarriage, that's where we want to go. And if we don't have any embryos that are going to turn into a viable baby, I'd rather you know that information now also versus waiting till later. So when you're doing genetic testing and we see euploid or genetically normal embryos not implanting, it has caused everybody to reflexively say, oh, it must be the uterus, must be the uterus. And that is where this ERA test came from. Well, what does it mean if it must be the uterus? Let's create a test to see if the uterus is receptive. And the whole idea about this receptivity was to see if the standard amount of progesterone that you're given in frozen embryo transfer cycles is appropriate or if some people need more or some people need less. When the test first was presented, the idea was to help people with recurrent implantation failure or recurrent pregnancy loss who potentially have an issue with implantation. And we know from studies by just using euploid embryos and doing the same protocol and not messing with this receptivity stuff, vast majority of patients will be pregnant after three transfers, right? The cumulative rate, single euploid embryo, 65% one transfer, 88% two, 95% three. So true recurrent implantation failure is ultimately on the low end. That's only about 5%. And so the idea of a test in those patients, but it got applied to everybody. And of course they're a business and they want to make money, but there was this idea that, well, Maybe you're not ever going to get enough embryos to get to recurrent implantation failure, or maybe you're older, or maybe we should do it on all of our patients. And there are clinics who do an ERA test before every single transfer that they do. Like first transfer, you do it. That didn't work, then I'm going to do another one before the next transfer. Wild. Okay, but so what you're doing with an ERA is essentially you're going through a mock embryo transfer cycle. You're growing the lining, and then you are going to do a biopsy of the uterus, Take the tissue from the uterus and it's going to be, the genes are going to be analyzed to look at the amount of the progesterone receptors and estrogen and make a decision on if you need more or less progesterone. That's the entire idea. 
test takes a few thousand dollars, takes four to six weeks, kind of depending on your cycle. So time and money. But there was this idea for a long time that maybe it helps, it doesn't hurt, so let's get on with it. And studies have challenged that idea, and we're gonna go over two of them right now. So one study says, and this is the effective timing by endometrial receptivity testing versus standard timing, embryo transfer on live births and patients undergoing IVF. And this is a randomized controlled trial, a very well done study. So in this study, what they did is they had 30 different sites and patients underwent IVF and PGT. So we knew these were genetically normal embryos. And then everybody had an ERA. Okay, so everybody did. So we don't want to act like, oh, maybe just the act of the biopsy or, you know, the scratch or that was negative or positive. So everybody had an ERA done, but not everybody got the results of the test. So everybody went through IVF. You had to have normal embryos to be in it. You went through an ERA and then you had an FET with the exact same protocol that your ERA had. And if you were in the intervention group, they opened your ERA results and they followed it. You need more or less progesterone. And in the other group, they just did the normal time, the normal standard, do the transfer on the sixth day of progesterone, regardless of what the ERA test showed. And then they went to go look at the outcomes from this study. And primary outcome was live birth. They defined it as viability at 23 weeks. And secondary outcomes were looking at biochemical rates or loss rates, clinical pregnancy rates. All right, so they had 767 patients in the study. There were about 380 each group who either had standard timing regardless of results or who had the receptivity, the personalized transfer. And then the rate of live birth in the receptivity timed group, 58.5%. And in the group that didn't open the envelope, it was 61.9%. It wasn't clinically significant, meaning when you run that through statistical analysis, they say it's the same. Those are the same result. So doing this test, made no difference in these patients. There was also no difference in secondary outcomes like biochemical pregnancy or clinical pregnancy seen on ultrasound. They also looked to see, well, maybe, you know, the group who just had standard timing, many of them didn't really have abnormal results, but in both groups, they were quite similar. So around 45% had receptive results, which is actually a much lower number than you would think. About 54% had non-receptive results. So most patients are not receptive, but most people get pregnant from a standard embryo transfer. That doesn't make any sense. First of all, this makes you wonder about the sensitivity of the test or what it's really testing. If most people going through IVF who do not have recurrent implantation failure and who do not have recurrent miscarriage because they were excluded, have abnormal results. That really makes you feel like the test is not really a valid test and that would make me highly concerned. Second, it is important to say this study and others support not doing this routinely, especially before patients in their first transfer or even after just one failed transfer. And then there have been other studies actually showing harm. So we had the article published in Human Reproduction this year that also said personalized embryo transfer reduces success rates because endometrial receptivity analysis fails to accurately identify the window of implantation. And then we also have studies showing failure to be able to replicate results. All of this taken aside, it seems like for the average person, most people going through, this test is not going to be appropriate, needed. It's just adding money, time, and potentially confounding results of what's going on. Also, if we think about it might be potentially beneficial in the recurrent implantation failure group. And we know that things like recurrent implantation failure are higher in patients who have autoimmune disease or endometriosis. And so is the real root of what you're trying to get to potentially an improvement in receptivity by suppressing inflammation, using medications like Lupron. So I think that the recurrent implantation failure group is small, 5% of people, and they might need something different. But in the bulk of the population, doing the ERA test is no longer recommended. All right, I hope this helped answer some of your questions. As always, leave questions below, let's get to them. And I would love it if you would follow along and subscribe. Feel free to get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram. Thank you, friends.